I think I got it now. All right. Well, so we're in chapter seven. I got ahead of myself. Uh, but anyhow, Noah, uh, we're talking about Noah and the beast. Yeah, we talked about the beast and the, and the, and the animals and so forth. Uh, in the sixth year of Noah, now this is talking about a date here in verse 11. This is where I think we got to what I've got marked. Uh, the sixth year of Noah's life, the 600th year, I'm sorry, not the sixth year, the 600th year of Noah's life, in the second month of the 17th day uh, of the month of the same, uh, the same day, where all the fountains of the great deep broke up and the, and the windows of heaven were open. All right, so look at this. This is where the flood begins. Uh, the, uh, Noah uh, and all the animals, and we talked about them all being in the, in the ark, and he, the Lord has closed, closed the door, and now the, it says on, it gives the date, the exact date. And I think it's interesting that it gives you the exact date. Uh, it's on a Jewish calendar, the 600th year, of Noah's life, and you can figure out what year that was if you wanted to go back and figure the generations, but uh, I ain't too much into that right now. But you could figure out what year that was, approx approximately. And, and Noah's life, and, this, and it was the second month of the 17th day of the month. Now, we're not talking about our calendar. We're talking about the Hebrew calendar. So it'd be the sixth, the, the first month, I don't, I don't have them memorized, but the first month is the sun. And it's usually around uh, around the uh, around the East, what we call Easter or pa uh, Passover uh, is in that particular period of time. The second month is interesting because you get a second month, you get the uh, Jews, if they miss the first month uh, to have to celebrate the Passover, they can do it in the sixth, the second month. Uh, if for some reason, if they were sick or they were unclean and they couldn't, they couldn't join their family or for whatever reason, they could have it then. Well, this is the second month when this takes place. Uh, and, and, and so it, uh, it's, uh, the 17th day sounds like it's approximately in that period of time because uh, Passover starts on the 15th, excuse me, the 14th day, and it goes for seven days. So it, it very well could be that this is taking place uh, actually during a Jewish holiday or a, a catch-up to a Jewish holiday, you might say. Anyhow, the fountains of the deep were broken up. Now, what does that mean? I believe it means that uh, there's a lot of water and water pressure under the earth at that time. And uh, the Lord allowed that to be broken up. And so it, so we think that it rained for 40 days, and it did. Scripture says that it rained for 40 days and 40 nights. But I believe also that the water's bu busted forth from the, from, the, from the ground, like geysers, you might say. Uh, that they broke up and it started and, and so the waters of the deep uh, were both uh, both the uh, uh, rain and the and the fountains of the deep were broken up so it's, it's more than just rain even though the rain was a large part of it now <clears throat> some thought got theories and I'm just going to tell you theories because that's all it is is theories uh, but I'll mention to you some believe and I tend to believe it's possible that that's what happened that we had a close pass, that the Lord allowed a close pass by of a comet. That's my opinion, because my comets are made up mostly of ice. And I think that that's what caused a lot of it to take place. It caused the canopy or whatever it was of the water above the earth uh, to collapse uh, in, in the form of rain, and it f affected the gravity in some form or fashion so that it broke up the, the, the waters of the deep. And also, I believe up until this point in time, there was only 360 days in a year, exactly 360 days. Uh, that's the way the Lord, I believe, made it. Uh, but when that, when that occurred, now again, this is my theory and a theory of a few other people, and it's, it's, again, it's just theory, that that increased the rotation of the earth somewhat when that took place, so that now we have 365.25, whatever it is, days, a year. In other words, it just increased the spinning of the earth. They do know that the blind people, uh, people that are blind, they can't, uh, they want to, their body clock doesn't match our clock. In other words, they can't tell when day is, day is night, night's day, they get lost on it. And that, that what happens is they usually get a, I think it's a head, I can't remember, head or behind, but it's because their bo our body clocks are, are, are are a little more, or a little less, excuse me. Well, I guess it'd be a little more, one way or the other, a little than than uh, than what the uh, the clock that we the time that we have the 24-hour period that we have. 
And so uh, that's kind of another reason why I think that those are different. I think that, that this occurred and it changed the, uh, changed the way that the earth, the earth, the earth moved. But anyhow, again, that's just theory. Right, I know we talked a little bit about in the last meeting, and I brought it up about the the mountains. Yeah. You know, the rain and the water you might be talking about now. And I said something about some of the mountains. You know, the, the earth changed its form. Yep. From a lot of, of movement, they can see that in the in places like the Yellowstone and stuff like that. Different layers. Well, I back here reason what I was trying to say is the mountains started to flatten out the hills and made all the water meet the deep, you know, yep. meet the ocean and all that. And that's Very possible. Yeah. That's what I was yeah. trying, would, trying to say, but I yeah. and of course, it out there doing it. Of course, if there was a close pass-by like I, like yeah. I think of some other object, it would affect the gravity. You know we got tides. The moon affects the tides every 24 hours because they're spinning. Well, if something passed by which gave a lot more gravity pull to the earth, that could have pulled the water up over the mountains too, for that matter. There's a lot of different things that could have happened. But the earth was flooded. It was completely covered with water in some form or fashion. And you're right, it could be the topography of the land changed and allowed that to happen. Uh, but there is, a, there's a, we do know for a fact that there's enough, plenty of water on the face of the earth to cover it. It's just a matter of the topography, like I mentioned last week, is the, what the, sh the shape of the, of the earth, um, the ground part of the earth, uh, allows some of it to stick out. And that's why we have continents and so forth. But, uh, but anyhow, for whatever reason, for whatever reason uh, uh, that, that took place, and of course, whether it's my theory or whether it's somebody else's theory, uh, uh, I mean, God didn't have to have a comet to come by. He could have done it in his own anyhow. Uh, but uh, that's just a theory that, that I've got. And it, again, it's just, like I said, it's just a theory. But anyhow, uh, lost my place here. Here we go. Anyhow, verse, verse uh, 11, then we get to verse 12. And the rain was upon the earth for 40 days and 40 nights. Now, that's a lot of rain that it rained for 40 days and 40 nights. So 40 days and 40 nights. And that's interesting because uh, the Lord was on the, after the resurrection, he was on the earth for 40 days and 40 nights. In other words, before, between the time he was resurrected and the time he ascended into heaven was 40 days and 40 nights. I think it's a parallel there too. And it's actually, it's approximately the same time too of when, uh, of when this took place, if, it's, uh, if we're right on the calendar. Uh, but anyhow, uh, um, uh, but of course, then, then of course, ten days later, then the Holy Spirit came. But we'll look at that. But anyhow, the rain was upon the face of the earth for forty days and forty nights. Don't mean that the water. The, basically, I think that means that the rain stopped. But everything else was still going on, the flooding and so forth. In the self same day entered Noah and Shem and Ham and Japheth and the sons of Noah and Noah's wives and the three wives and his sons with with them into the ark. So it's kind of strange. It, it, we talked a little bit about the, the flood, and then they say they're entering the ark, but I think the Lord is just, in, the way the, the Lord has placed it in here is he's showing that they got in just at the right time for the, before, the flood, before the flood occurred. But anyhow, it says Noah and his three sons. It names them Ham, Japheth, and Shem. Shem is the, is the, is the father of the, of the Jewish people, the Shemites. And all the, the 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 people there in the Middle East and so forth. Uh, Japheth is a, is the you might say the father, or at least it's estimated that he's the father of the of the people in nor northern Europe and the and maybe over in Asia and that kind of thing. And then uh, Ham is the is the father of the fo the people uh, in the south near in Africa and and maybe India and that kind of thing. We don't know for sure, but that's what they that's what they estimate. But anyhow, and then their wives, and then the uh, and then the uh, uh, and their and his his sons and his wives and his wife, of course. And it says, and they and every beast after his kind, and all the cattle after their kind, and every creeping thing uh, that creeped upon the earth upon after his kind, and every fowl after his kind, and every bird after of every sort, all were entered into the ark. 
<clears throat> Again, it's not that I believe that uh, uh, he had to go out and trap them. I believe the Lord put it in the animals to go into the ark, just like he puts it in the animals to fly south for the winter and fly north, uh, then come return later in the year. And a lot of times they can return, like I said last day, they can return to the exact same place they were born, to the same nest or the same area. And so if the birds can do that today, they can, the Lord easily could have put it into them to enter into the ark. You know, uh, if, if you remember not from that time, I think about it. There is that priest man that's building that ship. And then all these animals start coming. You know, every time, everything. And you know, the people probably were thinking, something's going What's on. What's going on? I, yeah. they had to be curious. I think the same thing is going on today, really. Yeah. The people, we, in our, in our spirits, I think we think, Something's going on in the area. Go ahead, Harry. The one of the things that what you just read about his wives and his, and his three sons' wives, but if you look back in verse eight, how many people was on the ark personally? Well, uh, if you figure it up, it'd be uh, six, seven, eight, plus, and they may have had some children. Those three but sons. But if you look at verse eighteen and seven. When it when it reads, uh, and thou shalt come into the ark, thou and thy sons and thy wives and their sons' wives. See, they had more than one wife. A lot of them did back in those days. Yeah. So how many <coughs> they don't have a number? Well, it could have been that they had more than one wife. Huh? What, what verse are you reading that from? Eighteen. Eighteen. Yeah. You're jumping down here, but seventeen. Seventeen. Seven. No, I'm talking about reading back what it, where it says in the, in the chapter. Yeah, I'm so, six, I'm sorry, 618. On oh, chapter six? 618, yeah. Oh, well, we missed that. Well, I, I got it highlighted because I, I wanted to ask the question, how many people was on the ark? Based on that, but, we don't know. It says, but with thee will I establish my covenant, and thou shalt come into the ark, thou thy sons, and thy, thy wife and thy son's wives. I don't know if it means it, it means there's there are three wives. It could mean that. Or it could mean they had multiple well, wives. Based on what it says in there, it says the son's wives and the and they read it back again, that shall come into the ark, thy sons and their wives, and thy son's wives. Yeah, well, that's three sons they're talking about. It could be three wives. Three wives. Yeah. That could but, be one. Well, I, I know it's kind of misleading if you read the thing. It says the sons and the sons' wives and the sons' wives. Yeah. So I don't know. Well, I believe uh, over in uh, the next chapter, it says the self same day entered Noah, Shem, Ham, Japheth, the sons of Noah. Noah's wife and the three wives of the sons. Yeah. So it basically is basically I'm saying it's just three wives. They didn't have more than one. Each son had one wife. That would be three wives. That's the way I read it. Yeah, that's what it says in that verse, but I just talked about going back and looking at the yeah, other looking verse. at the other one. It is kind of it is kind of confusing, I it's agree. Confusing, yeah. Uh but I believe what that's saying where you're looking at is it's, it's plural because there's three of them when it's, when it's saying wives. I don't think it means that they got more than one wife. We'll have to look at it a little more, but I don't, but, uh, but I see what you're saying. But let's see now, where do we get to? Let's thank you. 17. Say nothing about any children. No, it don't say anything. I don't know if they had children or not. They, probably, they, they may have, and they maybe didn't mention it, but it could have been that they, their wives didn't, I mean, their his sons hadn't had any children yet. There's a lot of things on that ark that, what is it, seven, eight, three, six, seven, eight people to take care of. Yep. Right? Yep. Yeah, they, I'm sure they had stored up food for themselves, I guess. And I, and I ter personally believe that it's very possible the Lord could have put the animals that did come on the ark, put them in a state of hibernation, just like bears hibernate. Uh, if, but the Lord could have put it the same way for other animals as well, uh, so that they didn't they didn't uh, require a lot of food that kind of thing. They, if you go to the ark, they had to have 
they they made it look like every yeah had yeah, stuff stored. They had food and they had it. They fed the animals. Yeah, and yeah, I'm they sure. stayed busy all the time feeding the animals. Yeah, I I agree. I agree. It had, something, had something a little unusual that I thought uh, their waste situation, the sewer. How yeah. they got rid of it, don't you think that that boat just, they just took the outside door and pumped it in and flushed the deck and, and it went back in the ocean or out in the water? Yeah. It shows you on the, when you yeah. go to see the ark, yeah. it, 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 has, it shows you how they did it, yeah. how they kept fresh water, how they. Yeah, and uh, I, I remember how they, how they <laughs> explained how they uh, kept fresh air in there, too. Um, yeah, that was pretty pretty unique how it worked. The waves all, of the ocean, they had a, a waves pumped air. The water would come up into this into this area in the ark, yeah. and it would as it come up when it was going up and down on waves, it was like it would baffle. It, it, would baffle. it would push air yeah. out, and then and then the, I guess they had a valve system, and when the wave went down, it would suck fresh air out from outside in uh, to keep fresh air in the uh, in the in it all the time. Well, it's interesting. It's interesting. If you get a chance to go, you ought to go see it because it's a, it's a good. It's you could you could spend a day in the back. I think that's about what we did. Spend about yeah, a day. You could very well spend yeah. a day there. You know, all the animals wasn't in there when we were there. They no. They didn't have the ramp built. No, they had some. They had some real animals and they had some dummies yeah. of animals. Because that'd be that'd be easier to take care of the dummies. But. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like something else I noticed is that their living quarters was really nice. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Because I always think of them just kind of roughing it. Yeah. And then, you know, I mean, they had... I think they cleaned all the poop up. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be more of the dummies, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, you might want to get... Would you go to the ark? Did you yeah. see it? Y'all yeah, yeah. guys seen it? Okay. I'd have to use some of them horses, I guess, and maybe some kind of huh? loaded on. I'd like to have to get some of the horses and stuff and drag you it around. Drag it around? <laughs> well, it might be what they do. I don't know. But anyhow, uh, for 40 days and 40 nights, verse 17, they were, and uh, it says, verse 17, and the flood was 40 days and 40 nights upon the earth. Uh, well, the flood was 40 days upon the earth, and the waters increased and bare up the ark, and it was lifted up above the earth. Am I, did I skip a verse? Yeah. yeah. I keep jumping around this thing here. And when, I so said, what did we get to? 14. 14? All right, let's go back to, yeah, let's go back to verse 15 then. And they went into the ark, uh, Noah and Noah into the ark, the two uh, of all flesh wherein it is breathed upon the face of the earth. And and they that were in went went in male and female of all flesh, and God had commanded him, and the Lord shut him in. The Lord shut the the, the important thing here is that the Lord shut him in. Uh, Noah didn't have to shut the door. The Lord shut the door. And I think that's interesting because you see, I think the, the whole flood uh, and everything is a picture of what I th I think uh, is a is a not just it but also Sodom and Gomorrah uh, all are a picture of what's about to come to to us I believe here on the earth I believe it's very possible that uh, uh, when it says they shut the shut the door that uh, it could be that the rapture takes place is it, similar to the rapture and when the Lord comes and and takes the church his people. He, he will shut the door and that the day of grace or the hour of grace that we have we have we have uh, benefited from will be over there won't be no more age of grace I do believe people can be saved during the tribulation but it won't be it won't be a it won't be a um, um, if, if you do if you if you would happen to be in the tribulation people that are in the tribulation and they do get saved they're very possible they will be uh, killed, they will be beheaded or whatever, because that'll be taking place during that period of time. Scriptures talks about it quite a bit. You'll be putting your life on the line. In other words, if you if you uh, accept accept the Lord, this thing jumped around again. Uh, but it, it 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 won't be a time of uh, of uh, uh, 
like it is today. But anyhow, uh, the Lord shuts the door to the ark. And I think the Lord will shut the door to, uh, to, to the world after he takes his people. Uh, if you remember over in Revelation chapter, uh, I think it's chapter 3, it says, he told the church of Philadelphia, behold, I put a door to you that no man can open and no man can shut, somewhere in like, like that. I can't remember, can't quote it verbatim. But, but the Lord says that he will, he opens the door for that church, the Philadelphia church, and then he will shut that door for the Philadelphia church. And that church is, that's one of the only two churches that don't have a condemnation to it. And I believe that's speaking of the, of the, of the church that is raptured out. That they will, that the Lord will, uh, opens the door to them, and then He closes the door. Uh, and he's the one. That, in other words, He's the one that controls the door, not us. We have no, we have no control over it. But anyhow, He does the same thing here with the ark. Uh, that um, that uh, He shuts the door, and uh, that, in other words, the time of of, uh, of uh, grace is over. Now, uh, could. You know, I've heard preachers preach it, and I agree with it. But, but every time, every uh, like all the people seen all this taking place, with Noah building this boat, maybe they condemned him because he's building the boat out in, I guess, nowhere where there's no water, uh, or at least nearby, and and he's building this huge boat, and nobody entered over that period of 100, 120 years. I think it was he took him to build it. Over that period of time, nobody got into the ark except for his family. In other words, they had that grace was for them. I think Noah would have allowed anybody that wanted to to come, but they didn't. Another thing about that is, is goes to the theory that I, I mentioned earlier, that I believe all hum, human flesh was contaminated. And that's the reason why the Lord had to con, had to destroy all the face of the earth. Every 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 living thing. And so for that reason they wouldn't have entered the ark anyhow. Uh, the Lord would not have wanted that to continue, but, uh, but we know that, uh, well, we won't get into that, but we know that it did continue through uh, what happened with uh, Goliath and all those other giants of, uh, that we hear see about later. But anyhow, uh, the flood was on the face of the earth, and the waters prevailed and were increased greatly upon the earth. And the ark went up uh, the face of the waters. In other words, uh, the ark was lifted up, and the waters prevailed exceedingly upon the earth, and all the hills that were under that were under the whole heaven were covered, and this goes back to you know uh, uh, archaeologists. I mentioned it here a couple weeks ago. They can find these clams upon the tops of mountains, clams that have were fossilized, shut. And for a clam to be fossilized, shut, it has to be covered alive, because when they die, they open up. Their muscles relax or whatever, and they open up but they were fossilized shut. That means they had to be covered up quickly while they were still alive uh, in order to be fossilized in that form or fashion. And they found them not only, not just not in the depths of the ocean, but on the tops of mountains, they find these. So that, that in itself speaks of the fact that the waters covered the face of the earth. All the mountains, just like it says here in this in this verse, uh, uh, were covered, whole, were covered, uh, Fifteen cubits upward did the waters prevail, and the mountains were covered. Fifteen cubits. Cubits. I wonder how much a cubit is. Eighteen, 18, 18 inches. inches. That's going to be 14 feet. Yeah. So 15, 15 cubits would have been probably, what, 20 feet or more? 14 feet. 14 feet. Anyhow, <laughs> now, the waters, they said, now you say, well, you take more than 14 feet of water to cover the earth. But I believe, like I said, that's the, higher than the mountain. Yeah, 14 feet higher. Uh, in other words, they, 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 they not only covered them, but they ensured that they were covered. They couldn't nobody survive by standing on their tippy toes on the top of a hill. They, they ensured that they all had to, had to die. The giants is big, but they let that be. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and all flesh died that moved upon the earth, both fowl and the cattle and the beast and every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth and every man. So this goes this goes against any of these theorists that says it was the Black Sea flooded or some of these other theories that they come up with. It was a local flood. Um, according to God, and I believe the word of God is true, 
that there was no living creature upon the face of the earth that lived. They were all killed, according to this scripture right here. Nothing else survived. And in verse 22, it says, And all, all in whose nostrils was the breath of life, and all that was in, in dry land died. Uh, in other words, this, what this tells us, the only thing that survived was the fish that was in the water. I think the fish did survive. Uh, but unfortunately, they hadn't been, uh, you might say, uh, contaminated, if you, if you will, for lack of a better term, with what all was going on on the face of the earth at that time. But remember, always remember that Jesus said, as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be in the days of the coming of the Son of Man. So whatever was going on in the days of Noah, we're going to see take place on the face of the earth again. And it's going to be right before he comes, right before he comes. And so I think that that's what we're beginning to see upon the face of the earth. In fact, I think we've seen it for quite a number of years now. Uh, and and of, of all, it, it, it has to be. I mean, people are going crazy. They're, they're, I mean, uh, why do... I mean, it's just, uh, why do we want to, uh, uh, I mean, I'm thinking just over here in America, but it's crazy stuff going all over the world. But why do we want to defund the police officers, the very ones that keep us safe? Why, why, do, why is that? <laughs> They're crazy. Uh, and and why, do, why is it the people, it's just like it was in the, in the time of, uh, of, of the northern kingdom of Israel, how evil, evil they got. Uh, that uh, the Lord just uh, scattered them upon the face of the earth. Why? Because of what they were doing with Balaam, Balaam worship. They were killing their children. And I think that was going on all, uh, during the days of Noah as well, uh, that they were offering human sacrifices and so forth. All that evilness was going on. And it says, and in verse 23 it says, and, in, and every living substance that was destroyed, which was upon the face of the earth, both man and cattle, everything, uh, everything except the feast, it was all the fish it was all destroyed, and uh, and the waters prevailed upon the earth a hundred and fifty days. In other words, after the forty days, when the water was fourteen feet above all all land, and I believe it was because if nothing else, it could have been a huge uh, 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 a tidal wave or something that covered the whole earth, uh, and, and, it had, and it had to wash away, and it. And of course, we know that it did. That's how the Grand Canyon was formed, by the way. Uh, and it says the waters prevailed upon the earth for 150 days. In other words, the water was over, prevailed upon the earth. But what that, I think what that's saying is the waters covered the earth completely for 150 days. There was no chance that somebody could have hanged on to a log or anything. Nothing could have survived that period of time. Anybody else got any other comments on this chapter? Uh, that was almost half a year. Yeah, 150 days close to it. You're talking about the, the days of Noah but, uh, at Revelation or whenever the rapture it all happened. That's when the door of the heaven is going to be closed. Right. The same as Noah. Yeah. Nobody else is going to come in. Right. That's, that's the way I look at that. Yeah. It's very similar. Uh, y'all y'all seen the, uh, I think I showed y'all the, uh, the video about the Jewish wedding and what takes place. Remember when they take the, 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 they go get the bride and they carry her, lift her up on a, I think that's interesting that they lift her up just like we will be lifted up in the rapture. And they take her to the bride, to the, to the wedding feast. And when they enter into the chamber, the wedding chamber and so forth, and, and ha where they're having the, uh, the celebration with all the families and all the invited guests, there's a period of, remember, I, they showed it on the, vi the video that they shut the door. And when they shut the door, everybody else that was, was outside, they couldn't come in. Uh, only the people that were inside enjoyed the wedding, the wedding feast and all that was taking place. And it's kind of like Jesus. Remember Jesus went to the first miracle he performed was, was at a wedding feast. And uh, they invited him, uh, him, him to that feast. Uh, he was there. And of course, that's when he made turn to water to wine and so forth. But anyhow, no one could have. No one could have survived. Any other comments or questions on this chapter? Back in verse eleven, when the waters came, it said the windows of heaven were open. The windows the of heaven. Came, the windows of heaven were open. Right. In verse eleven. 
when the fountains of the deep of the earth yep. and the windows of heaven were open, so it was coming up and coming down. Right, exactly. Uh, I think that when the, the windows of heaven, that canopy that it talked about in creation back a few a few verse, chapters back, uh, collapsed basically, uh, and that uh, that uh, that's why I think that the the environment has changed from what it was when when Noah was uh, on the face of the earth in that first fifteen hundred two thousand years, that uh, the the environment was much different then than it is today. That's why men was able to live so much longer uh, than they did. After the flood, you'll notice after the flood, the, the lifespan starts going down rapidly. Uh, and, and I think that's why that's what, what, what took, takes place. Any other comments? I thought when Noah was on the scriptures it confirmed about the number of people in the ark. Mm hmm disobedient when the patience of God kept waiting in the days of Noah during the construction of the ark in which a few, that is eight persons were brought safely through the ark. Okay, so that, might, that pretty well says that there were just eight, eight of them. They probably obviously didn't have any children uh, uh, or grandchildren you might say for Noah. It was just eight of them. Uh, Noah, his three sons and their wives. That would be eight people. According to First Peter any other comments? All right. We got time to go ahead and tackle a little bit of t in the next chapter. Let's go to chapter eight. Sorry, I led you astray, Ed. I thought I would. Well, I, I, I thought an hour and a half last night. <laughs> 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 I was ready for you. <laughs> well, we can go back and review if you want to. Right. You wondering what the sons of God is? Okay. Well, I, th I think, and many agree here, but uh, there may be some that disagree. I think that they're fallen angels that uh, come into the daughters of men, and that's what caused the giants and the, the Nephilim in the, in the Hebrew. And I said that they didn't think angels could be able to procreate. Pardon? Angels should not be able to procreate with one. Yeah, well, that's, that's one, of the, one of the arguments against it. But... Uh, we don't know exactly what's going on. We do know that, uh, I do believe that there was a, uh, uh, a change in the, that's why I keep talking about the change in the uh, uh, DNA, if you will, of, the, of mankind on the earth during, before the flood. That's the reason God wanted to destroy them all because it was all corrupted. Uh, but uh, uh, the, the, where we get that is, is, I think, as Jesus says, that there's no mar marriage or giving the marriage in heaven. I think that's where I think that's where that comes from. But it, it don't really say that, that you can't they can't procreate or they can't they can't reproduce. I think the Lord it, somehow or another they were able to do it. I don't know how. I, don't exp don't ask me to explain it because I can't. You said that all answers. <laughs> No, there are there are other other folks that say, well, that these are the, the sons of Cain. I think it is uh, come to the, the the daughters of one of the other sons, and these sons of Cain were evil, and and that that's where. But that's the, the question there is, how did they're a man, <clears throat> the sons of Cain, and the, and the daughters of men? Why how did why did that create giants? Why did that create the Nephilim? It just should have created a baby, just like everyone else. That's that's the argument against that too. So, there, but there's a good. Big pardon. We'll ask that when we get to heaven. By the way, chapter six of Genesis. What's going on here? There's a lot of there's a lot that took place, I believe, in the days of Noah, uh, and I I equate that to what's going on today uh, with DNA uh, trying to uh, hybridize mankind with animals and so forth. Uh, and and um, all kind of craziness that they're doing on, uh, with DNA today that uh, I don't think is right. Um, they're trying to create a super, a super, uh, and China, I know Ch I've heard of China's doing it, and maybe other nations, and we might be doing it as well, to create a, uh, uh, 
a warrior strain of man that can fight without, and they won't have to have sleep. Uh, they won't. They can. They can go and fight and fight and fight and so forth. Uh, be a, a super fighter, and they're trying to create that. Um, other, they're doing other things that are not right in uh, in the, in the world. Okay, Jesus was God's son. Pardon? Jesus was God's son. Yes. Yeah. Okay, he came to earth. He was conceived by the Holy Spirit. Uh huh. Yeah. Well. Maybe there's other sons, and they came, and they were not good. I mean, they well, failed or whatever. Well, anyway, I said, you don't understand all of it. You just know it's... That goes back to what I said, what we said right at the very beginning, chapter 3, when it says the seed of, 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 uh, of the serpent shall bruise his head. How can this, where does the seed of earth, a serpent come from? You see what I'm saying? I believe that the, the Antichrist will be a hybrid of, of, uh, of both Satan and man. Just like Jesus was a, and I don't even call Jesus a hybrid, but he was a, a son of God. He was conceived by the Holy Spirit rather than by a man. And so I think that Satan will be conceived by, by a uh, uh, evil spirit of some sort. Some way, some point. I, don't, I, I can't explain it, but I do believe it. Because it has to be the seed of the serpent that bruises his head, that's going to try to, uh, uh, or bruises his heel, excuse me. And, of course, it goes, I think we see pictures of it. I've told you about this before, pictures of it, when, when David killed Goliath. Goliath represented that hybridized giant that the, uh, was not was not right that the and, and, and David killed him, and then cut off his head. Well, it's not in script that is in scripture, but it's not in scripture that he took. The, but it is in Jewish tradition that he took that head, and he buried it at Golgotha. That's why it's called the Hill of the Skull. It's more so because the Hill of the Skull because of that than it is because it looks it does look a little bit like a skull, but that's that's where he buried it. And so it's, some believe that the actual blood, uh, when Jesus was crucified on Golgotha, they, uh, and I explained to them how uh, they didn't nail the nails into the top of his foot. They nailed them into his heel bones on each side of the cross. And so his, Jesus' heel was bruised there where the head of the skull was at, if, that's, if that really is the case, if the, if the Jews really did that. So his, his, his heel was bruised. And, and of course, that his head uh, was 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 also buried there. So that 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 I'm not saying that's complete fulfillment because it's not. But I believe it's a a pre uh, a pre presentation, like for lack of a better word, of of what's going to happen. Jesus bruised Satan's he, uh, head when he died on the cross, but he also his heel was bruised when he died on the cross. And there will come a time when that, I believe that that seed of the serpent, seed of the serpent, his head will be crushed by by the Lord. He will be finished off by the Lord uh, in some form or fashion. I don't know how, but it'll take place. Maybe it takes place at Armageddon. We do know Satan is cast uh, uh, into the, uh, in the abyss for a thousand years, chained up, and then he's after that he's cast into the lake of fire. So, anyhow. Uh, I, I know I know the theory. Of, I've heard the theory about man, but I I, I, I tend to believe that it's it's um, the sons of God are angels, fallen angels, that uh, conceived the Nephilim uh, with uh, with the uh, uh, daughters of men. But I mean, if you if you don't like I said, and anybody that disagrees, I mean, you, you, they're perfectly fine to disagree because uh, we don't know. I mean, uh, that's one of the things we don't know for sure. But we, I, I just base it on what the Bible, what the Bible I think says that the, that it is the uh, the sons of God. Any other comments? You was all ready for me on that, huh? Well, I was going to go ahead and say, <laughs> challenge anything. Uh, did I did I cover what you yeah, want? Yeah, you did really good. <laughs> <laughs> but one other thing I want to ask you about, we just mentioned a while ago, and I'll be quick. Uh, 
Oh, we found. Uh, when the Holy Spirit leaves the earth, it's rapture. I mean, uh -huh. The rest of the remaining people on earth is just helter skelter kind of thing. But there, you said there'll be people saved, and I'm sure there will be because there'll be the two witnesses plus the 144,000 right, right. witnessing. I mean, this is going to be a revival like you've never seen. Yeah. Really great and powerful things taking place. There will be people saved during that time. Right. And I'm sure there'll be martyrs. Oh, yeah. Well, I think it pretty well fulfills that. It tells about it. It talks about the, yeah. those that have died uh, are under the, uh, the under the, uh, uh, there where the Lord's at, under the altar. Uh, but uh, it's not going to be a fun time during that period of time. The 144,000, I think they'll be reaching out more to the Jews than anybody, but I think they're going to be reaching out there. I think the 144,000, I've said it in here before, uh, Paul alluded to the fact that he may have, he was he was one of the 144,000 that was born out of time. In other words, he, uh, in other words, I believe the 144,000 will be like 144,000 Pauls preaching on the face of the earth. Uh, that's what the way I look at it. They, they will they will be just like him. Uh, may not look like him, but I mean they will preach the same way and believe the same way that Paul did. Uh, like I said, Paul kind of alluded to it when he talked about that he going to the third heaven and stuff. He alluded, he alluded to the fact that uh, the time he was out of out of his time. Uh, I don't know. I'll have to look at it up. But he did. Okay. You No, no. But well, well, he will be. He will be. He'll only be uh, for seven years during the tribulations when he will be ruling over the earth and, and causing havoc. At the end of that seven years, the Lord is going to come, the second coming, if you will. And I believe that he will uh, put him in the pit, chain him. He'll be chained up for a thousand years in the pit. That's during the millennium. That will be then be during the millennium when the Lord will reign them on the face of the earth, and there'll be peace and. Uh, everything will be good, and I think it, I think creation will begin to restore like it was at the at the, uh, the uh, uh, Garden of Eden, and uh, then at the end of that, for whatever reason, Satan is released again, and I believe what what's going to happen is man he's going to use man, he's going to take convince man that that uh, this old this Jesus over here that's ruling is 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 not allowing them to be for what they should be, and. And they're going to get the desire to rule and reign again like Hitler. And they're going to come against Jesus. And, of course, Jesus is going to just, that's, that's going to be the end of the millennium. And that's when Satan will be cast into the lake of fire. That's just my opinion, but I think that's what the Scripture says. Anybody else got any comments? We don't know about the time season because the time season could be one day, a thousand years. A thousand years is a day. So we don't know that. Yeah. Uh, 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 what so it said, can be, and we think in this our time is a thousand years is a long time, but it could happen one day. Yeah, and for for God, it's just <clears throat> just like that, just like just like our one day. All right, let's all stand. We'll be dismissed. Dear Heavenly Father, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the Creator and Maker of this universe, and all power is in Your hands, and we just praise You, Father. And ask that you will help us open our eyes that we might realize what's taking place uh, in, in our, our uh, world today. Uh, help us to understand that, that we are living in the days of Noah, just like it was in the days of Noah. And that may, may Father, may we be obedient and may we be wise. Uh, the scripture says, as wise as serpents, but as gentle as doves or lambs. And Lord, we just ask that you will give us wisdom in these days ahead that you will guide and direct us according to your will, and that we, we will uh, be obedient in everything that we say and do. Again, remember all those on our prayer list, that you give blessing and healing to them, and we'll praise you, Father, for it. And uh, so I pray now a blessing over everyone here, that you uh, bless, guard, and keep them. Yavarechacha Adonai Vaish Marecha, Ya'er Adonai Panavilecha Vilkanecha, Yasa Adonai Panavilecha Vyasimlecha 
Shalom. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his shalom, his peace. As always, we pray for the peace of Jerusalem and Shem Yeshua. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. And it's good to have all y'all today.